this is chocolate and this is not. Hi guys, it's Wendy from CinnamonSweetShop.com and today I wanted to explain the difference between using this real chocolate compared to this which I call crap. Um, because it's been such a hot topic on my website, I thought I would address it further and I do have a lot to say about it and I have my notes here to make sure I don't forget anything. Right here, this is a cocoa bean and this is the start of all chocolate candy. This cocoa bean is made up a little bit more than half cocoa butter and then the rest are cocoa solids. What they do is, in the processing, is they extract the cocoa butter from this, which is this. This is a disc of pure raw cocoa butter. And then they take the solids, grind it up, and that's where you have your cocoa powder. To make a candy bar, they take the powder and they take the butter, they combine it, and they do all sorts of stuff to it, add sugar and vanilla extract, and you have a chocolate bar. Uh, this is white chocolate. And to make the white chocolate, it's mostly cocoa butter. They add maybe vanilla extract and some sugar, maybe soy lecithin, milk solids, but it's mostly cocoa butter. So this is real chocolate. In the United States, a product must have a certain percentage of chocolate to be considered a chocolate product. If not, you'll notice they'll be called chocolate flavored products. That's where we come down to this. This is known as a compound chocolate, or it's known as candy melts, or candy coating, or almond bark. It goes under many names, but it has very little, if any, cocoa in it. Now, the difference between this and this. This is a bittersweet chocolate bar. It has 60% cacao in it. This is semi-sweet, and it has roughly about 50% cacao in it as well. The, what the percentage means is this is 60% of that chocolate, that cocoa and that cocoa butter combined, and the rest of the 40% would make up sugar, soy lecithin, uh, vanilla extract. This is 50-50, so you have 50% of the chocolate compared to 50% of the sugar, the soy lecithin, and the vanilla extract. So there's more sugar in this than this. When you have 100% cacao, that's completely unsweetened chocolate. doesn't taste very good, but it's the healthiest form out there, and you could add your own sweetener to it. Now, this is mostly hydrogenated, par or partially hydrogenated vegetable shortening or palm kernel oil, either way. It's very little cocoa in here. So it's not even a chocolate product. It's really considered chocolate flavoring. This happens to have this brand that I'm using here is a Wilton brand and it does have some cocoa in it but not even enough to be called chocolate they have to call it a candy compound um, and it says real clear artificial flavoring in it because even though it may have some real cocoa it has some fake vanilla extract in it not even the real stuff so why would someone want to use this over this well I always try and use the real chocolate but for those who are not their home bakers, they're not confectionists, they have very little experience in chocolate, this is a much easier product to use. Following the manufacturer's directions, you just melt it in the microwave, 30 seconds, mix it 30 seconds more, and you can dip your fruit in it. You can make uh, can mold candy in it, make uh, candy clusters. Anything you would want to dip, you can use with this. Uh, it doesn't really, in my opinion, taste as good as the real stuff. Um, this, the reason that somebody else would, somebody would want to use this is they don't have to temper it. Chocolate's one of the fussiest ingredients I work with. Um, it's, it, you can burn it easily. If it's not tempered correctly, it won't have that snap to it. It st will still taste good. It's still edible but you won't have that shine and that snap to it. And tempering could be a little tricky. You have to raise it to a certain temperature, not above 120 or it'll burn. And then you have to mix it till it gets to a lower temperature. It's, it's just, it's a process. It takes some practice to do it. But in my opinion, if you can take the time, learn how to do it, it's definitely worth it to use the real chocolate over the crap, this stuff. Um, also, it's another benefit um, 
to using this is that it's a lot cheaper. Over the years, cocoa butter has increasingly gotten expensive, so you will spend more money for something like this, a baking bar, than this. Um, so this usually runs one of these bars, two fifty to three dollars for a four ounce bar. This you could get about twelve ounces for as little as two dollars for a bag. Um, I rarely use compound chocolate. It's just not worth it for me, and that's why I um, really don't recommend it. The that that's not to say I never use it though. I do have to use it on occasion because, and this is the only exception. It comes in different colors and while you can use white chocolate that I have here and they do sell candy colors not not the gel paste that we use in icing it's a special candy color it's oil based to color this it's very expensive it takes a lot and you still may not even get the vibrant color that you're looking for so on occasion I will use some of the candy compounds but I use very little of it I never will dip a full cake pop, for example, in one of these. I may use a cake pop using chocolate and then do a drizzle of a color on it. Or, instead of even using this, sometimes I'll just dip the cake pop in the dark chocolate and then maybe coat it with nonpareils, of red nonpareils or blue nonpareils, and you'll still get a color effect. Now, in an upcoming view, video in the near future, I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade candy melts that are clean eating, healthier, have a lot of chocolate in there. So stick around and don't forget, follow me on www.cinnamonsweetshop.com and subscribe to this YouTube channel.